Hello everyone, welcome back to the 1895. I'm Dagger Joe with me here today. We're going into, I talked about West Ham, it's the night before. We're going to churn it out. <laughs> Let's get into it. Right, Joe, we're coming into this game, right? We are, I'm not going to say treadbare, but we are, we're getting light, right? We're getting light in the, in the forward and midfield department, right? So, the Brian is obviously still out with COVID and Grealish and Foden are both doubtful. We have a feeling they're not going to play, right? But, they, they could turn around and play. We don't, we're not 100% sure, but we have a feeling they're not going to. I don't think they're going to be risked, which is really weird because of the top four about coming up. But, Joe, what do you think? Going into this game, considering the team that we think we're going to go with, what what, what do you think? I think with Grealish and Foden being doubtful, they're, they're not going to start. They're not going to start. They might be on the bench, but they're not going to start. You'd see Palmer start before them too because he's fit and he's just quality player isn't he really but uh i expect to not see sinchenko again after what happened against psg i was playing as a false nine despite being a left back which was the weirdest thing that was something straight out of football manager um yeah i think we've we are light in the forward and midfield positions with the injuries that we had i mean no torres no de Bruyne, probably no Grealish, probably no foden um we don't really have much in the way of you know places to go unless you do throw in like a Palmer or even a McAtee, someone who you know got some Premier League minutes last week. You don't really have any other options but to play the likes of Jesus, Sterling, and Mares. You know that dreaded front three where then none of them suit each other's strengths and it all somehow works but doesn't work at the same time. Like you don't really have much. You don't have anywhere else to go unless you do shift Bernardo up and play him as a false nine like you did against PSG, but then you've got to find another midfielder and then you've got Zinchenko playing as a false nine again. So you really don't have that much to do. And we saw when Jesus came on against PSG, he changed the game and he played through the middle and he played well. So I think you have to go with it because you don't really have anything else you can do. Yeah, I'd do, I do that too. I'd actually really like to see Palmer. So I don't think he will step, but I'd really, really like to see him play beyond the left, be through the middle, whatever. I'd really like to see him play. Um, I thought Mario was very good against Paris. Started off very well. Then half time came in. I don't know. He must have. Um, they must have kidnapped him at half time or something because he was nowhere in the second half. <laughs> Even though the two goals came down from his side, right? Both the goals came from his side, but he wasn't involved in either of them, which I find fucking wild because he is the man out there on that right hand side. But look, he probably play. It's a big. It's a big match. Like you, let's not take the piss out. This is a big, big match. They are four. They are fourth and they are they beat Liverpool. They can probably get a result out of Chelsea. They can definitely get a result out of us. Like I'm shitting myself. I'm I'm shitting myself more over this game than was Paris. I'll be dead on show. What do you think? Yeah, well they knocked us out the Carabao Cup not too long ago, you know, our trophy. Still, so yeah, they didn't, didn't even take that into account. They've already beaten us this season, albeit it was more of our B team. They still beat us. They still held on for a draw in ninety minutes, stopped us from scoring. Um looked dangerous on the counter. You know, they beat us on penalties, but they still beat us. Like, that second team, but okay, yeah, it's a B team, but our B team is not like other teams' B teams. Our B team is better than certain, you know, first teams in the Premier League. Our B team gets gets minimum top six. Minimum top six in the Premier League. Yeah, it does, and they and that's held up well. That's, if our B team is in the Premier League, where our A team so they get top six. Yeah, and they, they held on for a draw and knocked us out on penalties. So they are a very good team. They're high flying, as you said. They got a result out of Liverpool. They're through in their Europa League group. They topped it. They breezed it. Let's be honest. They absolutely they breezed flew through it. They flew like, they're a very on form team. They will give any team in the Premier League a go. Any team. And probably beat most of them. They're looking really good to push United with the disarray, you know, for top four. Mm -hmm. Um,. So we do have to be careful, especially you know on the break as we all because that's how they played against our B team. I imagine they'll play similar, you know, trying to hit us on the break. But that's what most teams do, unless you're a Liverpool. That's what most teams do. They try and hit us on the break because that's the best way to you know deal with us. Let us pile forward and break with pace because we've never really been great at dealing with it. Um, but that's that's just the way we're going to have to be. We have to be careful. I mean, Antonio's obviously their main threat up front. He's their goal scorer at the moment. Um, I'm not sure. I we're at home. It's not on the telly, fortunately, which is a bit weird. Back to just like go on. So we have a little chat about that. What the fuck? Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, I don't know, you know why. You keep talking, there, John. I'm gonna find out which one's on Sky tomorrow. Right? It's Brentford Everton, I believe. 
um, which is on Sky at the same time, which is odd. A top four club. We had the same thing. Um, we had the Leicester. same thing go on, yeah. Leicester, where it wasn't on the telly. It's a top four clash. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, like, we have to be careful for how much people meme on David Moyes for his United stint. He's a very, very good manager. He's got West Ham playing very, you know, regardless of how it looks on the eye, he's got them getting results, very it's, good it's results. Not bad football. It's much better football than, I'm going to say, a Chelsea. It's much better football than Chelsea. They're getting the ball on the floor and they're not playing fucking... I know they play a five in the back, but it's not awful terrorism level five in the back. They, they're they just different. They're different. And considering they haven't gone out and spent 500, 600 million on their squad, they're getting a good set of players. they got Suchek for cheap. they got Sufal for cheap. They have... Um, Rice. Bonner, and, Rice. Uh, Bonner, sorry, he say Rice is there. He is Antonio. You can't say anything else about him. You got player of the month. Like we're coming up against not a random player. But we're coming up against player of the month nonetheless. Cresswell's been Chris, Cresswell's been doing God's work for fantasy teams all around the club, the club, all around the world. So at the end of the day, this is a good team we're coming up against. And I don't know why anyone is even sitting saying, "Oh yeah, we'll go out and do this." If we won't. Like it's it's a very very close. Yeah. Very close. And, it's going to be very close. And look, we're, we're down on, on players. We're not going to mess around anymore. We're going into the team prediction after this, right? But we're down players. And look, we're talking about one now. Right, first up, you know the man, Edison. We're not all the old here. It's Edison, right? He was very good. I thought he was very, very good against PSG. I don't care about the goal, right? Could he have done more? Maybe. No, to me, I'm not a goalkeeper. I don't know how, how difficult that save is. He's in, he's in new, but Walker, who was fantastic against PSG and he has been fantastic for the last few weeks right probably a bit longer than that but he's really been stand up the last few weeks he's added this attacking element to his game he basically got an assist against PSG outside the county no. Diaz and Laporte Laporte was dropped for PSG which is really weird right but I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fret I mean he's gonna start this game because you know it's their rotation in rotation now it could even be Stones and Laporte all I can tell you is Laporte's down then Cancelo on the left, what can you say about him? He is the best fullback in the world. You're not dropping him, Joe. Tell us about that defence. What do you make of it? Do you think there'll be anyone else in? The only change I could see is Stones, but I think with Laporte coming in, I think it suits it down to the ground. West Ham are good from set pieces. They have tall centre backs. They have Zuma, um, yep. who's you know he's been great for them so far. Um, and we know how poor we can be from not only attacking but defending set pieces. So mm -hmm. I think he's. He's probably the best centre back when it comes to aerially. I think he's the tallest. Uh, he's usually a th he's usually our biggest threat when we attack from corners. So I think it's perfect to have him in in there, having a left footer in the defence as well. I'm not saying you can't have all right footers, but when you have a right footed left back, it kind of helps having a left footer in there. You know, somewhere it adds a bit more balance. He got taken off against Everton. And then just didn't play Paris, which I was confused about. But I think he should get this game. You can't, you know, just not play him. Because for the rest, of, for how sort of, I don't want to say average, but after that Palace game where he got sent off, you know, he hasn't really worked himself back into the team. We're in a similar time frame to when he lost his place last year. I think it'd be unfair for him to lose his place now, considering how good he's been for the rest of the year. Um you know, you've got to throw him and Stones in a bit of rotation and see who keeps up the form. And I think it's Laporte's time now after Stones made a mistake against PSG. Luckily, it didn't come to a goal, but he started doing keepy uppies in the, on the halfway line, uh, which is a bit weird. But I think you give Laporte this game and it's a battle between them two because we know Diaz is going to start. Diaz is now done. He's always going to start in a big game. Yeah, I, I, suppose, I, I do think it's there, but I genuinely, hand on heart, would not surprise me if turned around and didn't. But I'm pretty sure that Stones and Park played a game recently. I'm not 100%. I'm not 100% sure. It's so many games. It's all blending into one. Please give me a rest. But a man who's not out of form is Rodri. At this moment, on current form, right? On current form, I know there are some better set, defensive midfield, but on current form, Rodri's the best player. Best player, best holding midfielder in the world. I wouldn't take him out. Wouldn't even budge him for Fernandinho at the minute. That's no disrespect to Fernandinho, or he's just that good. In front of him, Gundogan. He's been silently dropping a few good games, so we just call him fat and forget about it. He's dropping good games. This is a perfect, uh, sorry, this is a perfect game for him. In a game that West Ham play <clears throat> 5 2 3, Joe, whatever you're right saying. Against bigger teams where they expect to have less of the ball, I believe they sometimes go to that. Yeah. We're not 100 sure, but I know they. I know they have a good midfield. They have a midfield too of Rice and Suchek, right? They are 
I don't mean to say easy, dom, dom, easily dominated is not the word I'm looking for, but when it comes to retentive players like Mares, like Gundogan, like Bernardo, like Rodri, like Cancelo, you can even say, those four or five players that will be playing in the midfield effectively are going to eight the arse off Declan Rice and Suchek. I don't care how good they are, right? That midfield, and I say midfield, they're all, they're all fucking midfielders, are good enough to break down any midfield in the world. Never mind this, right? We're going to have a good chunk of possession. I'm going to say about you know, what, 70, 75% possession. We're going to find it hard to break down. We really are going to struggle to break it down, but I do think we'll break it down in the end. And look, we'll get the score predictions at the end. Joe, what do you think of the midfield? I think the key is midfield. If we can get, you know, a man up on up. West Ham. We say this a lot, but it's true. You know, yeah. the game is controlled in midfield. That's where the game is controlled. That's where you control the tempo. That's where you have most of the ball is in the middle of the pitch. You don't spend, you know, 90% of the game or however, like, I'm exaggerating there, but you don't spend the majority of the game, you know, defending on the edge of your 18-yard box. You don't spend most of the game, well, sometimes we do, you don't spend most of the game attacking the opposition's 18-yard box. You don't. It's normally held by midfield and if they do line up in a 5-2-3 in a with just the two in there we've got the players to go out and really upset that and pass them around the park like we saw it when we played United they played a 5 although they didn't play with the wingers they played a 5-2 with a they played a 10 we still passed them around the park we still did. We still absolutely dominated that midfield it was so fluid we absolutely destroyed them they never got a kick like if we do that then it's all just about you know getting past said 5 which we have on paper the creativity to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, we did it against Paris, who parked six, seven, eight players behind the ball. Well, not eight because they don't have enough players because they got front three at the other end of the pitch. But they had a they had about six players behind the ball on in the box, almost scoring a few own goals. So if we can do it against the amount of money spent on that Paris team. And I have full confidence that we can do it against this West Ham team. No, no offense, but they don't have the financial power. Yeah, look, we. I think we say it. I think City and West Ham have this little special relationship, and we are fully bought into it. I really like West Ham. I think they're a great team, especially for the amount of money they spent. This City team are fabulous. <laughs> Let's not take the piss here, right? That some of the football we played against PSG the other night was superb. Like it was some of the most fluid football I've ever seen City play. And if we can go out and do that, like it's basically the same team. Like I'm looking at it here in front of me, it's basically the same team. It's just without Sinchenko. Isn't that true? Just, just to be clear, before I say shy talking, it's pretty much Sinchenko and Stones. Out. Sinchenko and Stones, in terms of the second half, yeah. Yeah, in terms of the second half, it's Sinchenko and Stones. Now, Jesus was the man to come in and change that game. If we play, now, I, I will say, right, I know we didn't score on that first half, it was the best football we've, it was a bit, better end of the football we had played. So, some of it was magic, like the, the passes from Rodri spraying it out, Mario's touch was just magical, right? We, if we can do that against PSG, and PSG, let's not take the piss here, they have a good defence. They have a very good defence. That Kempembe fell as a monster, runs my weekend league all the time, right? Marquinhos is up there for Team the Year shows. Hakimi is a 60 million fullback. I don't know. Who was that left back, Andrew? Noon Minch. He's shit. Right. <laughs> but we can very easily go out and dominate West Ham. And again, we mean in a nice way possible, we can go out and dominate West Ham. And I do think that this front three that I'm going to get into now is more than enough especially with the men who are on form Maris good 45 minutes goes to the bit in the second half but it's fine it's fine right he can he, he'd be a very good player to have him here for ball retention was Sterling is back he's back on form he's got three goals in his last three home games and he's going to come again he's going to score again I'm not telling you that for free he used to change again the other night when he came on is that more because it was lacking a focal point and anyone would have done better probably yeah but he's just still there. He still went and got a goal and a technical assist. Are we going to call it an assist? He did get the assist, didn't he? He got the assist. There you go. He got the assist. He got the goal and the assist. And he was great when he came on. I think he was very, very good when he came on. He changed the game. And look, it's enough, Joe, isn't it? It should be enough. I mean, <laughs> the tail of the game, if we if West Ham set up how we think they're going to set up, then Mares will, you know, undoubtedly, although he may not stand out, he'll still be important nonetheless because you think, you know, being patient is all about keeping the ball and not doing anything stupid and not giving it away, which he's very good at. Even if he's having an off game, he can still do that because his first touch is second to none and his close control is as well. And then, like you said, Jesus, 
I don't think anybody wants to see him through the middle, but at the moment, it needs must, and he did play well. Like, like would you, at the end of the day, Joe, would you rather see Sterling through the middle or Jesus through the middle? I'd rather see Jesus in the middle because he has played there before. He has had good games there before. He literally came off the bench and played there and scored and got an assist there. And again, ideally, we wouldn't want to see him there because that's not his best position. But that's in an ideal situation. Right now, we're dealing with what we have. And right now, that's the best option. And I will sit through him possibly missing a good chance like he usually does when he plays up there because he's on such good form at the moment. So he realistically... There shouldn't be anything wrong with him. It's not like he's gone, like, what was it? Like, last season he went, like, 14 games or something without scoring. It was ridiculous. Like, he's on good form. So, I back him to do well, because he normally sends it to R9 when his seat career is on the line. He's done that multiple times. And then Sterling, like you said, three goals in three... Three goals in three home games. He's back. He's back. Uh, unfortunately, he can't get on the right, because we just don't have the... the players to, be, to play on the left. We don't have the we facilities for that. We do not have the capacity, so he's going to have to play on the left. But, I mean, he scored from there against Paris. That's where he scored from. He missed one against yeah. Everton, although he'd already scored one, so I guess we, we let him off with that one. But, uh, you know, he's high on confidence right now. And again, he's also fighting for his City career. So he wants to play well. And even if his future isn't at City, he's still playing for his immediate future. Like, he needs to play well. So I think... I'm not expecting him to score because I think four and four is absolutely ridiculous and that's the sort of numbers that he'd be putting in you know, past seasons. Sorry, sorry to call over it, but if there's one man who can score four goals in four games, it's an informed, competent, and hungry ready himself having none of it. He is the man to do it. Because he's, on his day, he's one of the best goal scorers in, in the Premier League. Like, I don't care how many he misses, but he only scores. He was, he's one of the quickest players to 100 goals, Joe, isn't it? Yeah. He's one of the quickest goals players ever to 100 goals. And now he's 26. 26? 27, I believe. 27. That man's been around for years. He's been around years. He's a season Premier League veteran and he's not even hit his prime. I don't care. He's not hit his prime. If he gets this, like if he gets, keeps this run of form, if he stays in that team, he can be in this team for at least six more years. Six more years of him playing at the top of his level. And he is that type of player who can say that. He's that type of player who's a franchise. He's a leader. He's, the stands, he's a fucking standout human being. He'll be here. And if he, if he keeps his form, he will be here till the end. And that's what I want. All I can ask him is that he goes out and tries, and that's what he's been doing lately. And the calls are just a bonus to this set up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's hope he continues, because I think I speak for many City fans here who genuinely want him to succeed and do well and stay because we all love what he's done love what he's still doing you know on the pitch off the pitch and we want him to do well it's just can he keep this run going and it will be a real test because if they do play defensive then he will be tested which you know he has to this is a sort of game where a few seasons ago we're going it doesn't matter if this out defensive he'll still find a way now we're going can he find the way past a packed defence? Can he? Will he? And there's no better chance this season he's got than right now, like you said. Like, if there's any time he's going to do it, it's now. This is, this is the one. This is vital for his city career. And look, you know what? We're going we're gonna to get off it. We want to get to say we'll soon enough, right? So, score prediction. I'm going to say 2-0. Um, I'm confident in a back-to-back clean sheet, I think. Just 2-0. It won't be easy. It'll be one of them games where we either score too late on or score one early and score one late and we, you know, we're hanging on throughout the game. Like It will be tough and I won't be surprised if West Ham go and score because they are genuinely dangerous, but I think we'll keep a clean sheet. I don't, want, I don't usually copy it, but I was going to say 2-0, so I'm sticking with 2-0. I think it'll be one of those where it's 0-0 through like the 6th minute and we'll somehow find a way. We'll bundle one in and the next thing I'll we'll boom, it's... We'll just we'll, we'll take up. We'll turn on them. We we'll go. Oh, we've got one goal. We can all score with seven now. We we'll get another one. And I think Sterling for his rounds of score sheet. And I think right now I know two centre half scored against him last year. I think another one will score. I think the Porto will score and he'll cement his place. He'll come back right. And I think Gundogan will have a stand up game again. But that's our prediction, right? That's our prediction. The match is tomorrow. I don't know if it's getting up tonight or if it'll get up before the match. We'll find out. Go, but look, go over, follow the Twitter. Subscribe, we're on 550, pushing for more. We're trying to get, did we say, 600 for the end of the year? It might happen. Yeah. We could 
could go on a run. We have a big one against coming up. So look, if you want to be here for that, you want to be here for that. There's no watch long, not on telly, like you said. Might have a Twitter space after. We'll find out. Go on, look, see you later.